Welcome to the Nintendo Show, episode 59. I am your co-host, Devin Moon, and with me, as always, Trevor Payne. Trev, how you doing? Dude, I'm getting that that E3 hype, that E3 excitement. It's starting to course through my veins, Dev. Do you feel it? Are dude, you feeling this, dude? Dude, feeling the energy. I'm just... I'm Give shaking. Me... I'm getting the shakes, dude. <laughs> getting the shakes over here. I'm excited. <laughs> I need three milliliters of E3 stat. Stat, doctor, <laughs> nurse. I think that's a medical term. I think we, I think we did it. I think I believe that <laughs> we did do a medical term there. We are we trained doctors, uh, everyone. That's exciting news, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. This week we are talking about the Sonic Central, which is you know a presentation. <laughs> if you didn't know, Sega's got their own thing. Uh, that's Sonic Central. We're going to be talking about that. All the Sonic 30th anniversary news you would want to hear. It's coming your way. We're going to also be nailing down when we will see the Switch Pro because there are more details and rumors surrounding this mythical system that we are so very tired of talking about. But guess what? We dragged this dead corpse out once more. You know, it's the gift that keeps giving, but this might uh, please be the last time. Please be the last time my body is ready. And, uh, you know, a little bit of PlayStation <laughs> E3 news. Uh, well, what we want to see from PlayStation this E3, uh, that's a question from our wonderful listeners. And remember, listener, if you want to be part of the show, visit our website at nintendoshow.com where you can send in your questions, comments, concerns, and let them be implemented into the show. Trev, are you ready to enter the mysterious world? You call, we call. Mr. Mia Mr. Miyamoto's <laughs> Mr. Miyamoto's magical news. Woohoo! There it is. Number one. Uh this week. Nintendo graced our ears. Well, I guess Sega mostly graced our ear holes and our eye holes with a brisk presentation dedicated to Sonic's 30th anniversary. Uh, what we saw was disturbing and somewhat cool. And I iterate <laughs> somewhat. Uh, let's give <laughs> let's give this newly born geese a gander. Trav, let's pull up what we saw. Thanks, IGN, for this wonderful little article. Uh, first off, Sonic Colors ultimate reveal yeah this is Ooh. coming to ps4 xbox one <laughs> and the nintendo switch and pc hey everyone's getting sonic everyone's excited um sonic colors have you played it have you dabbled this was a wii game a ds game um it's supposed to be no. one of the better sonics one of the best is it really I, yes i need to check it out so here's here's my history with sonic okay i played okay. one and two yeah. on that good old genesis uh -huh. there was something about knuckles at some point i think i played something with a okay. knuckles in it listen don't slander uh, this okay don't slander <laughs> no nah, i'm not you can tell i'm going there <laughs> have some there. respect um, <laughs> i played sonic adventure on dreamcast that was uh i don't know if it was good but i remember it's liking bad. it yeah, okay. okay, cool. Yeah, well, I remember bad. liking a bad game. <laughs> and then, uh, let's see. I'll, I, I feel like I keep trying Sonic games and not liking them, with the exception of Sonic, what was it, Sonic Mania? Mania, yeah. That's yes, the one that, that I feel was, like everyone likes. That's like Yeah, the like, well, I think because it took it back to, to one and two kind of style of gameplay and when it was good. So yeah. I, I really liked it. Now, I like Sonic as a character. I think he is a cool design. I think he, he is one cool hedgehog the sonic movie big fan yeah really enjoyed it yeah um even the cartoons i remember the cartoon back in the day i thought was all right yes as a kid i i dug it greatly listen trev i'm a sega boy okay i ain't mm -hmm. no nintendo a lot regale me the, with your yeah dude sonic back in the day stories. genesis <laughs> genesis was my console my uh my birth my beginning uh, I skipped all Nintendo because I'm a crazy person. Just went straight. You know, the marketing worked, dude. I was ready to be a big boy, and I wanted to get my big boy shorts on and <laughs> wear them black leather straps. I'm ready. Uh, dude, the Sega Is that Genesis, all you were wearing were yeah, black yeah. leather straps? <laughs> Just strapping it up That's as why a child. you look so strange when you come over weird. to my house as a kid. I <laughs> yeah. was like, dude, what is wrong with this dude? Homeboy's a little gothic. Yeah, Homeboy's really... a little crazy with his black straps. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. I was a Genesis kid. I did not get into Nintendo to 64. Yes, I know that I shouldn't be hosting this podcast just for saying that. 
but yes, I love Sonic. Um, and Mania is the best Sonic, I think. One and two, three, all good. But uh, Mania is one of the best. But Colors is 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 a good one. It's very well done. Uh, it's the mix of the 2D and the 3D. So it kind of does that Sonic Adventures thing where it kind of goes behind his back for a little bit to do a few things. And then cool. you got the 2D stuff intermixed. Uh, I think it might have been one of the first that does that. Anyways, people loved it. It's definitely highly reviewed, actually, as a Sonic game. So obviously remastered it looks a lot better because as as we all know the wii not a 1080p not an hd system although is running with those running with those clowns running with the 360 and the ps3 uh the wii definitely did not have that clarity so uh seeing those remastered like i saw it on game explain seeing like the updates of this and that very like it looks night and day it looks really good so that's exciting if you're into that kind of stuff I think I'll give this a try because this is one that I've always heard that was good and I didn't actually try it on the Wii. So I, I'm i looking forward to it. Sonic Colors. And I think it was like in Wii's top 25 games on IGN a couple times. So it's Dude, good. Very Chad. cool. It's up there. I will be down. Yeah, get some get some uh, remake or remaster, whatever we want to call it. Mm-hmm. Love to that thing. I'll check it out. Sounds yeah, good. Uh, another one, Sonic Origins a uh, compilation was announced. This includes Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and Sonic CD. Uh, no release date. and just showed uh, showed a couple of those bad boys off. Um, I'm excited. <laughs> I feel like you can play these anywhere. Exactly so true. <laughs> it's like, it, you know, when I saw this, like they didn't even give it a, a release date, and they're just yeah. like, Hey, experience on modern consoles again. You know, it's just like, yeah. all right, cool. Let's let's do this again. I think I own the that compilation almost on everything. Dude, it was giving us a whole Forbidden West vibes. You know what I mean? Like, hey, we ain't yeah. giving you an announcement date on this because <laughs> we know you can play it at any time, but you're not getting an announcement date. You're not going to know when this bad boy hits the store shelves, okay? Well, I was on the edge of my seat edge waiting of my for seat. <laughs> the date, and now I'm severely disappointed because when and how and where am I going to be playing some Hon- Son- Sonic the Hedgehog? <laughs> well, it's special, impossible to know. It, it is impossible to know and impossible to play. <laughs> so good luck trying to pull out a Genesis or mm-hmm. any other Sonic place where you can buy sonic the hedgehog one okay so sonic 3 and knuckles there's something going on here that i do think you can't play one of these games and i think it's because michael jackson pumped out the sickest beats for one of those games wait are you serious yeah dude i'm dead serious no, sonic... this is like some weird fan no i'm not stuff, isn't it? <laughs> no dude i think i'm i'm legit I'm like being legit i think wow mj himself wrote some tunes for either sonic 3 or knuckles i can't I don't know if that's the same game, guys. I can't remember. I'm sorry. I'm being a bad Genesis kid. I can't remember. But either way, MJ wrote some sick tunes. And since that happened, uh, there's a lot of copyright issue going on with that game. And so that's the big deal. That's the one that they're like, check it. Um, But that also makes me think either they worked out the copyright issue with the, the ghost of MJ himself or uh, they just rewrote the songs and just kind of were like, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll figure it out. Very nice. Uh, so that's interesting. It will be, uh, dude. Sonic games have amazing music. Okay, they really. That's do. one thing. They, that's they, one they thing. They got some really good, good tunes. Yeah, they got some good tunes. Green Hills. I mean, come on, man. So good. Um, yeah. Blah blah blah. blah. So other things. We got animated shorts. We got some Netflix series coming on. Sonic mm-hmm. cameos, huh? This was a weird. Oh, now this is this, this is, is where a weird. I'm really excited. <laughs> Okay, this is the highlight of the whole Sonic event, dude. Okay, everybody, I need you to need you to buckle in for this one. Okay, yeah. pull over on the side of the road, get ready for these <laughs> announcements. Ooh, these are bangers, dude. Bangers, dude. This this Devin, like, don't disappoint. Me. You got to sell okay. these things. Okay. Now Mario, he tried, right? Mario tried. He had his chance. Thirty five anniversary. It was okay. It was average. He done messed up. He done messed up because he wasn't on Two Point Hospital. Yeah. <laughs> you remember that game? <laughs> yeah, I remember it too. How about Olympics Games Tokyo 2020? The official video no, game you. of the Olympics. Yes, now, this, this isn't is not... the Sonic versus Mario. <laughs> no, no, this is not Sonic versus Mario. And I want you all to know that these are 
are, there are grown men and women in these games, adult human beings, real modeled characters. And guess what? It's just a dude wearing a Sonic costume. That's it's all like it a is. dude in like, like it's like a mascot, like big head yes. Sonic costume walking around. Oh, it's great, Devin. Like seeing the Olympics, man, just these people putting their lives, their dedication into running and <laughs> jumping and throwing. And then yeah. you have this blue mascot running next to a dude hitting them hurdles. It is so good. Um, that's probably the main reason uh, I will get this game. Mm. So good. Oh man! Like I was actually, watching it, I was just dude. laughing because it was just so ridiculous. I was you just like, how? "How? Why? <laughs> okay, all right, cool. I'm in. I'm in." Dude, it's like Sneaky King. It's got that kind of perverse creepiness. To dude, it. it does. <laughs> it does. The Burger King King, dude. Is yes. that his name? Sneaky King? Is that what it is? Well, th- no, I think it's just the King. But like, there's okay. that Sneaky King game, and like, oh, it was yeah. like, and he would like sneak around as like Splinter Cell. <laughs> and you were the king and you That's were stalking right. people in their windows. It's got that creepy it's... vibes that I'm just so into. And I can't totally. wait, man. Like Olympic Games 2020 and Two Point Hospital is also kind of in a weird, <laughs> kind of a weird <laughs> model also that you're just like, they just put a costume on this. Like, it's not even like a good version of Sonic. It's just this really bad mascot outfit. And I just you can love see it. the hole where like the person's face is looking through. There's yes. a seam on the back. No, I, just got, I don't know if it's that bad, but <laughs> I don't know. It, anyways, bad. it's good. It's good. It's yeah, good. It's like this so made good. me happy. Genuinely, it made me laugh. Well, and, th- and then I just had a moment where I honestly was like, didn't we just have Sonic in the Olympics? Oh, this is the r- this is the real one. <laughs> this is real the one Olympics. without Mario. Anyway, mm-hmm. that's pretty good stuff. Um, mobile games. Hey, Trev, did you remember that of Sonic Dash? or uh yeah. s- speed any of these i had no yes. idea anyone was playing these still oh i knew I, that they existed i didn't think anybody played them though but. oh my gosh i played sonic dash i don't know when that was released seven million a years long ago. time ago a and long it's time not ago, good dude. it's not good <laughs> no it isn't and it's got like they're like yeah we're adding some halloween costumes you're like oh Cool. Okay. Oh, get me hyped for October, the end of October, <laughs> dude. I was hoping they would announce the stuff in May. I just do, who is waiting? <laughs> who is waiting for this? There are Sonic fans way above and beyond me that are just like they are yelling at us right now. Trev just freaked. I doubt it. Out. No, I don't think they exist. I don't think those. <laughs> I think there are Sonic fans, but I don't think there are Sonic mobile game fans that are just yeah, like, oh, is- they're finally talking about this. I've been wanting forever. I want to know about the werehog <laughs> for my Halloween costume. Where has werehog been? <laughs> I don't know. So, That's I, you know, it's one of those game. things I think is is ridiculous. I think it's, I don't know, are they just looking for stuff to throw in the news? Like, I oh, felt dude. like this was like borderline pointless. Borderline pointless. Very, very much though. Um, yeah, I mean, they. I think they were just, you know, Mario's doing a whole bunch of stuff. Is like, here's some pins. Oh, dude, one thing that's not even on this is the jewelry. Yes. Where the heck, dude? The ice is the ice. <laughs> Where oh, is who the is it? Ice, it's like paired bro? with like this like company that makes this sweet bling, dude. Oh, and dude. Uh, I, you know, I'm gonna be rocking that. <laughs> I like how they sold it too. If you're into hip hop culture, yeah. here's the. <laughs> Here's the, the jewelry ice. for you. You're gonna wear a tails. Dude, Trev. Pendant. How much? You got, how much? I mean, how much is this ice, bro? Because I might. Well, be if it's from a reputable ice. company, this thing's <laughs> think, gonna be expensive. <laughs> if it's legitimate, all diamonds, I think we got something. But I'm telling you, <laughs> I think I need some ice, dude. I think I need. Like, I've never wanted ice so much until today. Yeah. I need that. I would have done it if it was a grill. A yeah, Sonic grill, I would have been yeah. on board. Got the knuckles, like the diamond knuckles. Oh, oh knuckle, knuckles, knuckles, yeah. knuckles, knuckles. I mean, it just sells itself. Okay. I know. You know what? Okay. I think we need to redo our look, <laughs> our wardrobes. I think so, dude. I think Sonic I got to drop this dumb, you know, punk skater look and go for something a little, <laughs> a little cooler. Um, yeah, dude. <laughs> Dude, a little bit more fresh. A little more, a little fresher. A little fresher. The last one was the final. Hey, one, our last thing, kind of like Nintendo does. Hey, one last thing, everybody, and it was a, it was Sonic running through the forest, and I thought, oh, they're doing Sonic colors again, and then it <laughs> made a symbol, and that was it. And then I thought to myself, oh yeah, huh? That's 
that's the worst teaser I've ever seen in my life. But Trevor, I got a little sneak peek, a little, this is a little insider knowledge for you. Okay. Not that Whoa. IGN's going to be telling you. Okay. This is from like fresh out of the, out of somebody's armpit. I don't know what the frick it came from, but I'll tell you what it came from someone <laughs> and I heard it and I'm just going to spit spitball to you. It's called okay. Sonic Rangers. Okay. It's called Sonic Rangers. That's the title. This is something that Nint Sega actually leaked, but someone a, a play tester said hey i'm playing this sonic game and it's called sonic rangers and it's a breath of the wild Ze sonic game what no yes. that's not real yeah, dude that's what this this play tester said he was playing bro that sounds all right <laughs> that sounds all right that sounds all right oh my I gosh i'm okay with rewatching this. this trailer now uh, uh -huh. with that in mind <laughs> and i could get real i could get excited about that dude yeah that sounds okay I might get behind that you know i might be okay with yes this. so okay well what would that mean though like so if we that's are what I'm kind trying of to figure putting out sonic in the breath of the wild game what does that Just, what does that mean well he goes a thousand miles an hour weapons with degradation <laughs> yes <laughs> he's starves constantly he needs energy oh shoot he's gotta grab that and food. it's only chili dogs or whatever it <laughs> yeah, is that yeah. he it's eats in the in the plant. tv show yeah yep trees are hanging just chili dogs hanging from trees um yeah man okay. i i I'm on, dun I'm in dungeons board. some dungeons not good ones just repeated scenery dungeons over and over again uh <laughs> at least 200 of them and then a few giant beasts um and that dude i think i'm ready all i gotta say is it's not bad it's not a bad idea and it's definitely something new for sonic so yeah like an open world sonic, sonic game. I, I could get behind like the thing it is, is like cool. hey with breath of the wild it totally flipped zelda on its head from what we knew like it really changed things and it really felt new and refreshing and you know i think people use that as almost like a descriptor of like, hey, they're doing something totally different. Not necessarily that it's a Breath of the Wild game, but maybe like they're doing the Breath of the Wild thing to Sonic where it's a brand new, way different than what you're going to expect. And so that yeah. would be pretty rad. Yes. So I'm I'm like, you know, I'm timid. I'm not going to say it's great. Listen, Sonic has never been, like we said, Mania is at its best. Like when it's 2D, it's at its best. I know mm -hmm. people love adventures, but come on, guys. No, it ain't good. <laughs> uh, but I know I know people did enjoy it and still do. Um, anyways, that's the Sonic stuff. Hey, happy 30th, Sonic. Number two, recent rumors from Bloomberg seem to point to the Switch Pro being shown off before this year coming e uh, this year's coming E3. The reason for this uh, is because third party developers want to show off their new games on the Switch Pro. So, Trev, we've talked about this. Let's go over a few of these uh newer rumors these are definitely rumor territory now the bloomberg stuff that will probably happen the before e3 we're gonna we're gonna talk about our predictions on that one that sounds but, awesome but this one uh is coming from uh people that are developing um like like uh cases and things like that for the switch pro or rumors or whatever this is where those rumors are coming from they're saying it's an oled screen seven inches we've talked about the OLED oled screen similar size joy cons will be the same all that stuff very similar uh the changes will be the kickstand will be a, like a surface kickstand not the yes. tiny little flap yes full-on surface which i'm a big fan of that trev dude 
I've been, been talking about this for a while, like just within my family to my kids, just like this kickstand sucks. Like it doesn't work unless you're on a table, like a flat table, any other surface, if you wanted to put it on your lap and prop it up, it's just impossible with that dinky little kickstand that always breaks off, mind you. Oh, but yeah. like a surface style built in where the whole thing kind of angles out, you really can't put it on anything, which, and if they have that type of hinge at different angles and things like that, that would be mm. sweet. Yeah, that'd be super cool. So, I mean, it seems a little pricey, seems like a Nintendo to me, but that'd be really cool if they did that. Cause that stand is really, it really does hurt. Like, because they always show it in the commercials. Look, we got the little switch and everyone's gathered around it. Like, but no, they do that thing break my, I don't think mine has one because I lost mine because it got ripped off, you know? And yep, so I had to order third party stuff off of Amazon and reinstall new ones onto my kids switches because the original ones all broke off and we lost the pieces. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's not a good. It's not good. That's like one of the weakest things. So if they do fix that, that's a great improvement. Uh, the other improvement comes with the dock. Um, they're saying that there's going to be two USB 3.0 ports on there as well as an Internet port, which would be nice for those uh, our fighter boys out there are uh smash brother guys are splatoon you know actually having an internet that works especially since the switch is um not the best i would say with their yeah, wi-fi the, the wi-fi chip the wifi inside sucks. the switch is pretty weak yeah i hope that they upgrade to like a wi-fi 6e or something like that into the switch would be sick yeah um, but so. honestly like at least an ethernet option like you can buy a usb to ethernet adapter for the current switch so like yeah. that is a possibility right now but to have it built in there's space in that dock like they could totally fit a little bit more into it I yeah and I, and I feel like it should be in there although i don't know how many people wire up anymore i feel like it's a very uh wi-fi heavy thing but i guess you know there are people that do that definitely like super pe people that are super into the fighting community all that i'm sure they do that um, so that's interesting. Uh, again, 4K, that's been talked about to death. That will happen when it's docked because there's obviously the OLED, I think, will be 720 still, which I think is fine uh, for it's the fine. size of that screen. I don't yeah. think you need to worry about that. Uh, 4K output, but doing that DLSS, which we've talked about before. And so that's the new stuff. It's just kind of those little tiny minor changes, which actually might be pretty nice overall. And uh, yeah. Price price range, Trev. We've talked about this before. With this in mind, do you think we're looking at a four hundred dollar model, a three fifty? Where are you? Where's your head at right now for this thing? I am thinking three fifty is what we're okay. gonna see. Um, I think that they are gonna be reluctant to release <laughs> a device that's four hundred dollars. I think that's gonna be really hard for yes. them to put that out there. But I think because first of all, OLED tech is become a lot cheaper. Almost everything mobile has an OLED screen at this point. If they're keeping the resolution down, they're making these minor tweaks that don't seem crazy. I really think they could get away with 350. Mm -hmm. And then they drop the original switch. So that original switch then gets discontinued. It no longer is when they currently sell. And yeah. then they sell the switch light. So then they have their switch light at 200. They have their big boy pro, whatever they want to call it at 350. Uh, I think that makes sense. Yeah. And I think uh, that's the other thing. Yeah. Is that they were going to, some are saying that they will drop the middle switch. So there uh, the switch pro will replace the switch current switch. Yeah. I don't know if I agree with that. Like, I don't know when that will actually be implemented. I feel like that would be a bad idea to do right off, but I don't know for me. I think it'd I think be better to have three models than the two. I so know. are you thinking maybe like this one is the four hundred dollar model, then your yeah, normal switch is three, three and, then and then two light is two. Or honestly, like that pricing structure makes sense. Yeah. I just think that like with them wanting to like pump these things out, and then also I think that as developers are gonna really want more and more people to have this 4K support or whatever new stuff that's going on. I think, you know them phasing out that original switch makes sense and just get rid of That's it. True. That's I, true. I mean, if it were me, I would be like, yeah, I won't buy the $300 one. I'll save up a little bit more and get the 400 or the 350, I think is like the sweet spot. Like it's yeah. just a little bit more. And if you do need a cheaper switch, there is the switch light for two. 
Yeah. And I, to be honest, I do think 400 is too much. I think I do too. Cause you have a PS, well, you have the PS5 digital, which is that price. Yeah. You also have the Xbox One. Oh, sorry. The Xbox nope. Series nope. S. <laughs> yep. Get heck. Oh my gosh. The Xbox Series S, which is 300. Right. Am I right about that? Yes. Yep, okay. So, we, so that one is a hundred dollars less. Um, my problem and considerably more powerful console, I would say, than sure. the Switch. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I don't know how the Switch Pro will compete, but we'll see. But so for me, what I would like to see from Nintendo is drop the Switch Lite to a hundred dollars, do the Switch Whoa. regular Switch to two hundred, and then do this new model to three hundred. Uh, it sounds. Well, I doubt they would do that. Because uh, why do that? I'm sure they would want more money for the Switch Pro. But I think it'd be really cool if they did that. If you they, if you got the Switch Lite down to something like $150, and yep. maybe the regular Switch at $250, and then the other one at $350, that's a big deal. If you can play Switch games for $150, just like you did with the T the DS, um, that's a big deal, man. You Dude. could sell a shizload. Of as consoles. you're saying that yeah that honestly like if they could pull that off that would make so much sense to me in my head and i think that would open the doors to people either buying a second switch as their pro or whatever mm -hmm. and then also a whole new customer base that has decided not to buy one because they're they don't either don't have enough money or whatever it is yeah. dropping it down to that 150 that becomes at that point something very enticing and easy to buy for a kid or whatever yep. um because like towards the end of the 3ds's life and also the ds like you said like you could pick up a new 2ds xl for 99 dollars. you know yeah so that is such a good way to like get people into that ecosystem and then you're making money off of games sold and services and you know software and things like that um i don't know that would be really cool i honestly that is the one I'm hoping that they go with. That's kind of cool what I'm hoping too. Yeah, just 50 M down each. And then, you know, that way, you know, if you're not into the pro and you still have the, you can still be a regular. But yeah, it does. But I also like yours because it does force Nintendo to upgrade, which I do like that. You know, it forces everyone to be yeah. like, okay, we do need to improve. But it does also leave the light in a bad situation. You know, it so does. one way or another, we have a problem there. So hopefully well, I mean, something, I don't know. I don't know which one it will yeah, be. Yeah, maybe, but like not really. Like if everything still runs at 720 portable, that's, oh, that's the, true. the light that's is at, true. you know? So that's a good point. But I mean, yeah. maybe it just wouldn't have like the frame rate and all that stuff that whatever this new yeah, is hardware offering. will have. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, but the thing is too, is like they're not doing, it doesn't seem like they're doing a switch to or like a hard break saying like, boom, okay, here's the cutoff. Now this is like a new generation or whatnot. Yeah. So you know, I mean, they need to, no matter what, they need to support those old devices regardless until they get to the point where they're like, hey, here's the next gen switch, switch yeah. two or whatever we want to call it, super switch. Well, and they've always wanted to be like Apple. So I wonder, are we just maybe? And I think to me, Trev, the switch is the perfect idea to be like Apple. Does that make sense? I know they're saying yeah, that they're going to do kind of like an that annualized Constant yeah, sorry. Update. Yeah, and annualized thing every yeah, I don't know, probably more like every four years or something, you know, instead sure. of like every two or one like Apple. But kind of um yeah, I don't know. I feel like they might do that because they've always wanted to do that, but who knows. That would be cool. I would I would like that like cuz then you just like okay, every couple of years upgrade to get whatever the latest one is at the time. The only downside is then you get confusing as far as like we're eight years down the road and then on the back of the box, does it say like, okay, this is only compatible with Switch Pro, yeah. Switch Lite, Switch whatever. And then, you know, like that, I feel like that at that point gets really confusing where iPhones are like, okay, the iPhone 8. When you go to the app store and you go to buy something, it says 8 and newer. And so you know roughly what to expect. Yeah. So that maybe they could do something like this, but the naming again makes it confusing because you're like, okay, is the Switch Pro older than the Switch Lite? If you're someone that's not super into you know, video games and up to date on all the latest knowledge. So I think that's something that they need to be careful with. Yeah, I think you're right. Either way, it's, it's coming, guys. And it's coming, uh, dude. Next week is what people are saying. But so let's go through the dates. I just I, here's my, what's, okay. what's playing this. OK, so I think if we do see it, I think we're going to see my gut is telling me next week, a little yes. bit before E3, 
You're going to get it next week. Obviously, I didn't think we'd get it this weekend because I think everybody, like, everybody's like been out since Friday, it seems like, yeah. at a lot of these companies. That if anything, they announce it like tomorrow or Tuesday, and mm -hmm. we get it like on Thursday or something like that, the Direct itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. We'll definitely, yeah, I'll probably have a lead up to it. I would think some kind of announcement. Hey, join us for our really special something or other. Um, because you want to make a big deal. Thursday yeah. always seems to be the day that they announce these things, at least directs major ones. So I'm either yeah. thinking it's going to be this June 3rd, which would be a Thursday, or it will be the next Thursday, which is June 10th. So right, literally right before, a couple days before Ooh, E3. Kick an E3 week off, man. Yeah. That'd be sick. That would be sick. And I think that'd be a good way to do it. Another reason people are saying that this is happening is because because someone, I don't know if it's a third party of some that Nintendo has, wants to show um, show off their game. And they were really insistent that they, you know, show off the pro version of it. I do not hmm. know what company would have such cojones to like say, <laughs> hey, Nintendo, you're going to show this. Because apparently they wanted to show it. It's Microsoft. Past E3. It could, it could be, that would be crazy. It, <laughs> it could be. be, it could be. I don't know if it is. And that's my other thing. Is there a whole Microsoft thing going on when you have a Switch Pro? I mean, that's so much news. It's a lot to take in, but I mean, it's exciting. But anyways, uh, so they were going to show it after E3. That was the rumor, but apparently they were told by some third party that they want to show it at E3. So it has to be a big guy. And the only other one I can think of that's a big guy that can control Nintendo in that way is probably Pokemon Company. And so is Pokemon Company the guys that are doing this? They're not usually the people that push system power. So I don't think they well, would be the ones. I I but hope I so, because you saw that uh, Legends Arceus trailer. Yeah. And it was like so framey, like down in the like 10... 15 yeah. frames per second like it was yeah. real jittery and maybe they had to show that version because of whatever just what's it, like the pro the hasn't been announced yeah but like i hope so because they really seem like they're trying to do something different and big and robust that would be cool if they're like hey we please announce this thing because we yeah. know we're already developing for it then we can show the 4k version and really wow people that would be yeah. sick that would be that would be the e3 yeah. you know mic drop right there is it like having be. pokemon on stage 4k awesome graphics all that good stuff that'd be awesome yeah so i don't know if it's pokemon but they're big enough to do it another big enough company i don't know man i'm like i'm trying to think another giant company that's not nintendo that knows you know it would have to be a big game like a big third party game and that's exciting yeah. dude so i don't know what it is but it's exciting me the whole thing is exciting me so yes again dude. well and we've we've known about this thing forever like i think yes. at this point it's safe to say like the switch pro is a a fact almost at this it's point fact, like yes. it is gonna happen there's been so much rumors so much speculation so much news that has come out that it's gonna happen it's just about when at this point Yep. And I, dude, I'm so ready for it to be done. So I'm like third, 10th, let's just do it before well, they're E3. saying, let's just do yeah. this thing. And there's same potential release around September, dude. Like that yes. would be awesome. So towards cool. the end of the summer, yeah. rocking and rolling with the new switch. That sounds all right in my book. Yeah. I'm very excited about that. And hopefully with a breath of the wild too, with it, that's, that would be dude. If, if they home run that, if Breath of the Wild 2, which a lot of, and here's the thing, a lot of Zelda games are released, like the Switch Lite was released with uh, uh, Link's Awakening. Uh, Breath of the Wild was released with the Switch. A lot of, right. uh, I think a 3DS was released with Majora's Mask, or the Majora's Mask one was. Anyways, like they do things with Zelda a lot with these consoles. So it is very possible that, hey, we got also the system seller, and guess what? It looks a thousand times better with the Switch Pro, and it's Zelda, baby. I, if they do that, if it all happens in this year, I am... It's going to be very exciting for Nintendo. It's going to be a great year to be podcasting for these beautiful, beautiful people. I'm very excited, Trev. Yes. I'm hyped. Anyways, enough of mm -hmm. that. Enough gushing.
Uh, let's get into uh, what we've been playing, Trev. What you what you been up to, man? So a couple of things. Now, <laughs> I feel like you know I, I'm actually able to start playing some games with my broken arm, my broken nice. hand. I'm able to get a little bit more movement. I've been playing some dual stick stuff lately. It's been really uh -huh. good. Uh, so you know what I naturally do when you have full access to any game you can play at this point. Yes, I went power. back to Animal Crossing New Horizons. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that uses the big two, important no game where you're always, you know, aiming down sights and all that good stuff. No, <laughs> I so I jump back in because there's been so many updates and it's been months, yeah. months and months since I played this game. Um, They've added a bunch of Nintendo or sorry. Yeah, Mario stuff to it. Yeah, which is really cool. So like the whole uh, green pipes. Uh -huh. Dude, they're they're game changer, man. Put oh, really? one on one side of the the island, and then the other somewhere else on the island, you can just go down the pipe and you pop up at the other one. It has made Dude, my like nice. my day so much easier when I'm <laughs> running around doing my chores, my Animal Crossing yeah. chores. So I've been playing it for about a week straight now. Every day at this point, where I log in, do my stuff, and log out, and it's it's been really fun. I forget how refreshing that game is, and then I get mad at it and then i leave but like it is it is a very fun like hey check in see what's going on do my thing for a little bit and bounce um, yeah. i don't really commit more than probably 30 minutes to 45 minutes each time i play it i feel oh, like yeah. i get in do my things i need and then i leave yeah. and i that's fun that's fun yeah. for me like you know check in do my stuff and so i've really liked that um but I think I'm going to be moving on to Mass Effect, uh, the collection that they oh, yeah. released yeah, yeah. on the Xbox here soon. So I think that's what I'm going to be moving to. But the other game I'm playing is the Mario Kart mobile game. Oh, nice. Yep. Uh, good? I'm broken. Bad? Uh, they've made it a lot better. Uh, it okay. used to be really bad. You can play in landscape mode now. You don't have to do portrait, which just seems Thank it gosh. makes more sense to my brain. Yeah. Uh, I still feel like the controls are really finicky. I... Mm. I want them to add controller support and just let me play it as a normal Mario Kart game. And I think I would love this game because they have so many tracks they have mm. so many characters there. I like that almost like weekly or daily. I don't know how often, but they're constantly adding new like cup tournament challenges and daily yeah. challenges and all these really cool things. Like I feel like they're supporting it really well and I'm having fun with it. It is one of those things like, okay, I got a few more minutes before I need to do something else uh, on my lunch break or whatever. I can pull it out real quick yeah. and do a couple matches and it, it's super fun, a couple of races and I have been enjoying it. So I think the updates that they've made to this game are getting better um but it's not perfect the controls yeah. are still wonky and weird and uh but graphically it's beautiful like it is such a cool looking game on the phone that's cool i wish dude it's so weird that they just got controls wrong on that game like nintendo's known for their controls like being pretty decent for the most part you know there's well, some wacky moments with zelda's jumping and stuff but like yeah but I feel overall like, like yeah they're great at controls and yeah with this too and i know that they wanted to make this like hey it's designed for mobile it's designed it's not designed for a controller like you're supposed to swipe and tap and stuff and that's fine i'm okay with that but the thing is is that they they didn't do it very well it still feels strange no matter how many times i go in and kind of tweak the settings to figure out what i like the most i've played games like sonic transformed racing whatever it's called on yes. the phone and it uh -huh. controls so well like i'm surprised at how well it actually works with the touchscreen and for some reason mario kart just seems and feels off so mm -hmm. either i want them to just add in like a virtual stick you know and just let me mess around with it that way or or just add full-on controller support would be so cool yeah yeah that would be way cool yeah well one day hopefully someday we'll see yeah, dude. Uh, what are you even playing? Oh, man, uh, for me, so I, I want to jump into Resident Evil 8. It looks so good. I just it really, does. I dude, I looks, it looks so down my alley. I love everything about what I'm seeing. So, but I want to get into Resident Evil 7 because I haven't beat it or haven't, yeah, I haven't beat it all the way. I've gotten like halfway through, I think. Um, but I lost my save file, and so I have to restart. So I restarted it, and I thought to, to myself, first off, my Xbox One, which I is the OG, and it looks like garbage. It is the worst looking thing ever. Like it just, I don't. 
it just resident evil seven looks really bad on it and i think it's also i have this really bad this tv that i'm using mm-hmm. is not helping it is like pixelated so bad and so blurry that i just cannot deal with that game right now so sure. i stopped that i also stopped it because i was scared to death that game is too scary i love resident evil but that one is way too freaky for me and i just i just feel like i'm gonna die every single like i'm just it's so <laughs> tense so i'm like it really I don't, is i don't know if i want to dabble with seven maybe i'm just gonna skip seven and just go to eight because you know eight i just, pro- i would yeah eight just seems a little more I don't know. It's just more actiony. It's more like RE4, which is not scary. It's like action scary. It's a little horror-y. Right. And so and little I'm a, jump scares here and there. Yeah, and... here and there. I'm more into that right now. I man, seven is just like a it is seven like, is twisted. Dude. It is so messed up. Like it is, <laughs> I don't know. Like I've only played just a little bit. I'm just like, I can't do this. I can't handle. But I have played uh the demo or whatever uh, for eight and yeah. was able to play it no problem like i thought yeah. i was gonna be okay here we go but i <laughs> was able to just enjoy it so i i would say just jump there and watch like a, a story recap yeah. on youtube or something i think that's kind of what i'm gonna do like again seven's a great game and i know it's about it's supposed to be about the scares but i just am not just not feeling it now i don't know what it is i need happy go lucky stuff so i also popped <laughs> in some 3d world um 3d world yeah. I, you know, beat Bowser's Fury, gave our review of that, thought it was amazing. So I'm on 3D World. Uh, I beat it, but man, that game just keeps going, dude. Like, so you beat Bowser the one time, and then he's like, uh uh-uh, uh, I'm going up to the <laughs> special, special space. And then you go up there. And so I beat Bowser the second time. The game is over. But now there's like these fairies, and they're like, hey, there's another space in space another space in space anyways uh yeah so i'm in the galaxy type world uh for that game and i i think this is the end i don't know this is cool. there's a lot of game okay. in this game dude there's a lot there of really game is, in 3D there? world um i don't think i beat this game all the way when i first played it on the wii u i think i was really close to beating bowser just in general and i didn't get to this extra like fairy stuff um but dude great game love this game super fun um I don't know. It doesn't hold up like I remember it. I think for the most, like as far as camera controls go, but I do enjoy the game still a lot. And yeah, man, it's fun to have a game where you're just listening to a podcast and jumping around. That's like a hundred percent. That's my thing right now, man. Just like having something to just like, I don't know, mindless games where all it is is about jumping. There's no story. You don't have to be involved. You can do other things while you're just playing this game. Uh, I'm loving that crap. So 3D World, guys, if you haven't got it yet, especially for Bowser's Fury, totally worth it. So good. Let's get into a fan questions. Ryan asks, what would PlayStation have to do to make a super hype show this E3? What game would you like to see from them or games? Uh, What's on your radar for PlayStation, man? E3 is not, they're not going to be there, they say, but what is there? I'm sure they will be in the vicinity in some way. What is it? what, What are you excited about? I think that they will be, they won't be officially a part of E3, but the, I mean, they're going to have announcements and stuff. I'm, I'm sure of it. Yeah. Plus, there's a lot of third parties that are going to be showing PlayStation crap. Um, but I am hoping for whatever the next God of War game is. I hope mm-hmm. that they show that they've announced it. They haven't showed anything. So I want to see a PS5 exclusive only to that new system like show me what you can do because first of all the 2000 what was it 2018 god of war uh, for the ps4 was so good and looks amazing and it looks so much better even on ps5 right now uh with the little updates that they've done but yeah. a full-on ps5 god of war i want to see that so incredibly bad 
Dude, God of War. I think God of War was the best game of last generation. I yeah. I'm not going to fight you on that. I think, I think it is. I think you're right, dude. That game is incredible. The storytelling, the gameplay, the just the visuals, everything about it was so incredibly good. And it just did it a little different. I feel so I do Horizon Zero Dawn 2 was shown. That game looks amazing, right? Or right. sorry, uh, Forbidden West. Looks, Forbidden, yeah. Yeah, looks amazing. It looks so good. But when I play that game, I wasn't like, or when I see that game played, I'm like, it looks amazing. It looks like a great Sony game. But that's the thing. A lot of these games are looking like the samey. You know what I mean? Like it's a sure. little samey here and there. And this game, is it amazing? Yeah. Is it? A, but it feels like mechanically there's not a lot going on. But or at least differently mechanically not a lot going on but god of war did it a little different like the open world was done differently everything was just a little i don't know it just played differently and i can't even describe it i can't like point to what felt different about that game but open world wise and everything about it just felt a little i don't know man I, it was it was something different it was something special man it's not Very. it's not like assassin's creed -y. You know, it's not like you have you know, this which, open space and let's get on the top and look at it and then kind of like do these tiny little dumb quests. It's like, I don't, it's very different. It's, it's almost like solo gameplay mixed with that kind of open world a little bit. It's very totally. different very different uh, and just pulled off so well and like it just like even all the little minor moments in that game where you're canoeing you know across yeah. a lake or river or whatever like the way that they do the storytelling with you and your son uh art Ar i can't remember his name Ar artie i'm gonna call him artie good old artie uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's just like so many moments that I'm just like, I'm going to stay on this boat because I just want to hear the rest of the story. Like it is so intriguing and yeah. just the way that they present everything is just so grand and huge and awesome. Like, so I, I want to see that. Um, I also want to see, and this will probably be with Square Enix though, but I want to see Final Fantasy 16. I want to see a deep dive of that yeah. game and what it looks like and what it plays like, but that's, that's just me. Well, yeah. And Final Fantasy 16, I think is the next, at least the ones that we know is like the next big heavy hitter, uh, you know, other than Ratchet and Clank and man, that game, uh, ready for it. it. They don't cool. need to show it anymore. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. <laughs> they can just release yeah, it. They're done with that one. But for Final Fantasy, I'm like, it looks I love what they're doing with it. It seems like they're kind of going back to that older style, that uh, six or whatever, FF six, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, it just is. It's the Final Fantasy that you don't get much of uh, for at least for at a least any more. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I I'm excited about that. I love what they're doing with it. So it looks cool. And that's definitely the other one for me. It's like Final Fantasy 16. If you show that off, if God of the God of War you know ragnarok has like it's supposed to be released in 2021 man that's what the, like forbidden west is the one that didn't actually have a date but it's the one we've seen the most of yes. and god of war has a date and we haven't seen any of it so it's weird so that's what i think you know weird. everyone's like yeah no way god of war is going to come out this year which i understand i i tend to agree with them on that one but i'm like but it is the one that they dated like it's the one that they were <laughs> exactly. like yeah we're we're gonna do it but right. i guess we'll see on that for sure other games that are just kind of floating around for sony i don't know i mean if you had those two entering this year i think they don't need more than that sony usually sticks with two big heavy hitters for them right um especially when you have ratchet and uh we had what what was the other one that just came out the uh oh chick middle-aged chick and it hitting aliens oh man why am i not remembering this? oh that's so bad oh it's oh whatever it's so annoying that i don't remember that title anyways that that's one awesome. that one that just came out uh yeah so if those do hit that's something but i'm trying to think of like other things that i want from playstation i think for me i just want to see mostly new titles again it's yep. like same for like xbox i just want to I want to kind of show the new stuff, new. Yeah. IP. What's the new generation look like for games? That's kind of what 
sucked about seeing Forbidden West. It was the only part that I didn't like is you're like, it still is a PS4 game and it still feels like it's in that era. Although it looks a thousand times better. I have no idea how that's going to run on PS4, but right. uh, you know, I want something more than just looks. I want to be like, wow, this is g- genre changing. This is new in some way that I haven't seen before. And I, that's what I need from Sony. I, dude, even a first person shooter where like Sony needs to branch out of the genre that they have created. Like the they are becoming, person. <laughs> yeah, they've become a house of third person, open world action games. It's like a whole bunch of different versions of Assassin's Creed, essentially, you know, yep. it's like, you can play with the Assassin's Creed with robots. You can play the Assassin's Creed with, uh, uh, the samurai or the one with the v- zombies or, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's, you know, that's so true though, Dev. Yeah, I oh, agree. Man. So I, I would love to see, you know, genres, let's do different genres, let's get a first person shooter in here. Let's get, you know, let's do some ro- the, uh, the robot guy, uh, Astrobot. Let's get him yes. in here with some platforming. That's not VR exclusive. He, I know he was in his own little, you know, uh, kind of free game, but I would like to see like a big, like let's put some money like behind full it. Full fledged. Yep. Yeah. I would take a full game like that. Like it was that demo game kind of thing was so cool. Like I would take a full on game of Robobot. Yep. Or is and it Robobot or what is it? Robo Astro- something. Was- Astrobot. Astrobot, That's right? It. Yeah. Astrobot. Yep. And like, and why not go into the first person genre again? Like I know Kill Zone, in my opinion, dude, Kill Zone sucks and so does uh <laughs> the, alien, the alien one uh whatever that uh resi- re- Resis- res- resistance yeah yes. resistance. both of those i know everyone was like halo killers no dude you're full of shiz but N- playstation could do it i know they could because they make amazing Guaranteed. games like i know you yeah. could do it and yes you didn't hit it with those in my opinion but obviously they sold well enough that you made sequels i don't want more of that series of either of those but i definitely no. would love to see a linear shooter from you guys like compete with call of duty compete with halo compete with all these other genres let's get out of this let's let's change it up that's all i want to see from playstation and i want to see some games because right now it's like man i i guess like i'm very excited like out of all of them xbox really needs to show the games but you know playstation i think they can rest on their laurels for a little bit and they might with god of war if they show it off and all that kind of stuff and uh but i hope they don't so anyways yeah. Anything else? No, I game wise, I think we covered it. I do want them to. I would love PlayStation to come out and say, hey, we're revamping PlayStation now and it's going to be the Game Pass competitor for PlayStation. I think it would be so cool to have something like that because uh, PlayStation now is a cool service. I don't think it's one that I feel like I have to be subscribed to where game pass. I'm like, dude, it's paid for itself over and over again already yeah. this year. Like it's ridiculous how many games I've played on that thing. So I think having some kind of revamped service where PlayStation can compete with Xbox in a way, I think that would be pretty huge. I think that would be awesome. Yeah. And it doesn't even have to be like the same, same, like it doesn't have to no, be just something you don't need a hundred more competitive. Games. Yeah. Like you no. don't need a hundred games. Like you can't afford it. That's fine. You're not Microsoft. You don't have billions of dollars just to do it. You know, <laughs> just to blow. like just throw <laughs> freaking money and be like, yeah, you know, but you do have all these like great exclusives. And so maybe what you can do is a really like, uh, I don't know, like pinpoint or like dedicated s- selection of games that, are sony only games that are really amazing you know and you're like oh yeah we can beat you in this way and there's kind of like a service to it right something like that maybe like i don't know how you're going to compete on the same level just because there's just so much money involved and this is the company like this is the company for sony you know well and i think uh execs from sony have even gotten up and said like no that is unsustainable what they're doing we can't like that doesn't make sense and i think it makes sense for microsoft right now but like i think down the road hopefully the price doesn't increase and you know whatever there but i would like to see uh sony go in and say like hey our 
right now they don't have backwards compatibility. They have game streaming through yes. PlayStation now. Yes. And so make it so, hey, you can download instead of streaming all these PS1, PS2, PS3, whatever games that are available on there, you're able to download them and play them directly. Yep. Also, like release more of your exclusive stuff on there, I think would be really cool. Yep. Yeah, especially your backlog, like especially yep. your backlog. Like you have some of the best games ever made and you're just Dude, for sitting on it. You're just doing what Nintendo's doing. I mean, you do a little better, but like, it's still the same. Like, it's still the same thing where you're just like, guys, you could wreck. You could wreck with your back catalog here. And a lot of people are young and they haven't played those older PlayStation games, you know? And I haven't. I haven't. I missed PS2. I missed PS3. And I missed the original because I was a Nintendo guy, right? I was a Nintendo guy and my and an Xbox guy. And I totally skipped PlayStation until PlayStation 4. So you know i'd love to play some of those old games some of them look really good and are classic for a good reason oh right so. absolutely and yeah i think that could be a good game changer Trev, final recommendations. Uh, this is where we give something awesome to check out, video games or otherwise. Trev, what is your final recommendation? All right, guys. Final recommendation. You know what? Sometimes the world is too crazy. There's, it's so go-go. You're always working. You're always doing your chores, doing yard work. I don't know what you're doing. I think everybody needs to take some time and have tea time, Devin. Oh, take some time. Pinkies set up. aside... Brew some teas, pinkies up, dude. Pinkies up, pinkies and up. and just down some tea, dude. Like so, there's so many good teas out there. I like a lot of loose teas. Uh, that's my favorite way to steep it. I love like I love a nice oolong. Ooh. Some dragon pearl oolong is real uh -huh. good. Uh, you know, I enjoy me some yerba mate is another good one. But there's so many teas out there for all the different flavors and whatever you want. But for me, it's more of the taking time away to like wait and be patient and to relax brew some tea sit down let it cool just sip on it and take a moment to kind of breathe and decompress from the crazy world that we live in so that's my recommendation everybody chill decompress maybe do a little meditation time something with your tea and uh just just enjoy enjoy the moment dude that sounds so nice right now like i'm like right? i'm down for some tea time and I'm you know what tea time dude i'm gonna be rocking my sonic ice have some tea <laughs> you know like, what, I mean? what is up with this guy <laughs> i love it dude that's a great recommendation though because it does sound really nice uh mine is uh apple watch i just barely got an okay. apple watch um i'm an apple dude so it makes sense for me to have that i have my iphone all that good stuff so i want to recommend this for everyone i don't think an apple watch is for everybody but uh for what i'm doing which is like tracking steps exercise all that kind of stuff if you're into fitness and that kind of thing i would suggest an apple watch and you probably might already have one or maybe you have a fit but i like the apple watch a lot because it has all the other features of messaging and all this other kind of stuff and you know it's actually kind of convenient especially when like driving to be like switching your tunes just from your watch and stuff is a lot easier than i know like big deal you have right? to move your hand a little bit but it's a lot easier to do it from your watch and i know it, it sounds is. silly but it, it actually is a game changer <laughs> and like other things like directions like using your maps on, on like things during driving is a lot less scary mm -hmm. like i'm gonna crash into somebody to find it because it's just sitting on my wrist and that's a game changer for me and i like it's silly it's like silly stuff like that or like pausing my music from a distance or it's just I use it every day. I really I'm loving it a lot more than I thought. Every time I saw people with an Apple Watch, I'm like, man, you bougie boy. What are you doing with that stupid thing? You know? What's up, BB? <laughs> but like I, I understand it like it has, there are conveniences. Again, I don't think it's for everyone. It's not 
you know, not everyone needs it. It's not a need. It's definitely not a need. But no, it is. But it's a it's a luxury, man. It's a it's luxury, nice. dude. Yes, it is a luxury. And I never thought I would like a watch on my wrist, but I like a watch on my wrist. And it's if you really want, it's it's a nice joke too. So if anyone is like being slow, you just look at your wrist. It's an yeah. automatic joke. Like you're already you're you just point at your way. You tap the watch three times. You're like, okay, we got to get going. You know what I mean? I have <laughs> a thing. That's a constant joke place to in my be. life. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's it, it is it has its benefits. So if you're thinking it, if you're just you're on the fence, just dive in. Just dive in. I guarantee you will enjoy it. It's it's it is worth it. If you're if you're thinking, if you're dipping that toe, might as well just I'll push you in. Okay, go <laughs> go into that water. <laughs> Love it. Uh, that is it for us. This wonderful episode of the Nintendo show. Thanks everyone for listening. Make sure you follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can remember to like us and rate us on the podcast service of your choice. Leave a review on iTunes. Really appreciate that. Uh, check us out on weekly recharge, especially this coming couple of weeks. Uh, I'm sure we'll have reactions of the switch pro when it comes out. Uh, we oh, will yeah. have our reactions of E3 as it comes out. I'm sure Trev and I would like to do something with that. Uh, we're going to figure all that out. And it's going to it's gonna be a fun time, man. Lots to talk about. And of course, we will have the Nintendo show posted there as well. And there will be a big E3 extravaganza. I think we'll probably have to do everything, dude. I think we'll do Nintendo, Xbox, PlayStation. We'll talk oh, it all about yeah. in a big old episode of the Nintendo show. Um because it's necessary, you know? I think it's necessary think for so. the E3. I think so. So anyways, thank you everyone for all you do. Give us all the likes. Give us all the love. Thanks for all the love that you have given us so far. We really appreciate you all. Our dedicated fans, you guys are the best. Until next time, bye.